roll your eyes, but I uniquely screwed up each one of my five kids, uh, you know, separately, and, and I, I, I take full responsibility for that, but you know, one of the greatest, greatest, greatest things was being able to go to my kids and say, I was wrong. Would you please forgive me? I want you to know that my kids absolutely love their mom and dad, and no matter where they are around the world, they, we are in such good touch and, you know, in, in such good communication and relationship. And that came because we were say we felt safe enough to tell our kids, you know what I did back there and those things you remember, you know what, I was wrong. And I'm so sorry. You know, and, and you can you pull out all the, hey, I did the best I could, you know, and all those excuses. But, you know, somebody who's hurt, you know, if I slam your fingers in the door, you know, um, it doesn't help you, it doesn't ease the pain if I say, hey, I just did the best I could, you know, I was just trying to, you know, I, I didn't see you, you know, it still hurts. It still needs to be apologized for. And so I tell you what, you can be set free to admit you were wrong, take responsibility, apologize, bring healing to your family, bring healing to your friends, to your relationships, to those people that you feel distant from. You can do that if you take responsibility for the area in which you were wrong and ask for forgiveness. Who wants to feel free to be able to ask for forgiveness and be set free from that insecurity? Anybody? Just me? Stand up. Hebrews 4.16, what does it say? So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. When do we need it most? Always, but specifically when we've messed up. When do you need mercy? When you've messed up. You know? When do you need the security to be able to just say, I was wrong? You will find that to be so healing. It will set you free. Father, right now you see these people, you know the situations they're thinking about or feeling right now. Father, I just pray that you would so move in this place, that you would so move in our hearts, that we would feel so secure and confident of our standing with you, that we could safely admit when we've been wrong, that we could set it right, that we don't have to look the other way when we see somebody in a store, that we could actually set things right, that we could heal our kids, we could heal our families from some of the things that went south when they were growing up. Father, we want what you want in our lives. You want us to be free. You want us to live free. You want us to be free of insecurity, free of shame, free of guilt, and your way is through confession, repentance, and forgiveness. And so, Father, just come. Show us who we are. Help us to feel safe so that we can admit when we're wrong. In Jesus' name, amen. Two more. Number four. You can be seated. I am confident in my Father's provision for me, and I'm freed from fear of lack. I'm learning to be content in whatever state I am. I can be generous and not have to struggle with giving money away, either my tithe to the church or in giving to others, and it can be so much fun. I am learning that. I am learning that. I know I feel so much freer than I did years ago. I feel like I don't have to struggle so much anymore about generosity. Uh, another thing about my kind of tight and, you know, even keel upbringing was, man, you hung on to every cent you had, boy, because nobody else was going to provide you with anything. You had to get your own, especially after dad was gone. It was like money was like, mm, grab it and hang on, you know, spend it very wisely, you know, and so, you know, I, I, I had this insecurity over money and God came and when he showed me who I was and how safe I was with him and he taught me about his provision. He wants his sons and daughters to feel free. It says God loves the cheerful giver. He says Paul teaches about giving. Don't let anybody be, don't, let, don't be under compulsion. Don't be under manipulation. We didn't use manipulation to get you to give, Paul teaches and so on. And, but let each man ask God what he should give and put that aside and give it. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that kind of a secure feeling? Isn't that good? And so... 
but the, the premise for that is that God is my provision. Wherever you work, whoever your employer is, whoever writes your checks, I want you to know something. If you're a child of God, that person is not your provision. That person is a channel through whom your provision comes, but God, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, God, right from the Old Testament all the way through, all the way through, I will provide what you need at the moment you need it. And so, I've learned to develop this theory that, which is turning out to be a reality, that if I don't have it, I don't need it. And so I don't care. I've learned, Paul says, I've learned to be content when I have lots, and I know how to be content when I have very little. Just be content wherever you are. Because God is my provision. God gives me what I need. He doesn't call you, adopt you, equip you, pour love into you, and, and give you a mission so that he can watch you flounder and struggle. He does it, and then he also provides what you need. How many people could use a little more confidence in the Father's provision for them? Let's pray. Father, again, you see our hearts. You know that your promise is my God shall provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory. That you will provide for those who call on you and for those who are your sons and daughters. And so, Father, we just long to grow in confidence of your provision. We long to be able to be generous as you are generous. We long to be not have to struggle when you should happen to tell us that maybe we should bless somebody by buying them a meal or a cup of coffee or a, just giving them a gift or, or putting money in the, in the offering for the, for the uh, mission of this church and so on. So we just long to be free from fear over finances and to learn how to be generous and to learn how to do it joyfully, not hesitantly. Hesitantly, Father, we open up our lives to the reality and the revelation that you are our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. One more. And this is maybe the most important one. I am able to really love others because I don't need their approval. I don't have to impress them, and I have nothing to gain from them. You know that... Sometimes we love people, and Jesus taught about this in the Sermon on the Mount. If you just love those who love you back, so what? Everybody does that. He told us, that's why he goes radical and extreme and says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who abuse you. He's trying to set the tone. Love, to be real love, must be given in a way where we don't expect a return. He said, land and don't expect a return. You know, it's, it's like... God wants our culture to be like his. He wants his sons to be like their father. That's not weird. That's just the way it works. And so he is generous. He pours rain down on the just and the unjust. He, you know, he, it's like God saved you and made you alive when you were dead in your trespasses and sins. God paid the price for you 2,000 years ago before you were even thought of, but he thought of you and he paid the price for you. He paid the price for the sin of the whole world. He really loved. And he wants us to be like that. He wants us to love when we don't, we don't, once we know who we are, we don't need people's approval. It's nice to have people's approval. I'm not saying if somebody approves of you, you should go back off. I don't need you. I mean, it's nice to be approved of, but it's, it's when you're getting your primary embrace from your Father who is in heaven. It's like it says in the Psalms, if my father and my mother forsake me, God will pick me up. Like if, if there isn't anyone. You're in the best place in the world, God said to me one time. When you know that other Psalm that says, whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. And he said to me, if you had no one on the whole earth who loved you, I would love you and it would be enough. And so we, we, we learn, we want to learn how to love, really love other people freely without any hidden agendas. Let's just stand one more time. I think we all need this. 
Father, we need to learn how to love the way you love. Father, we brought up in a selfish, self-seeking, insecure culture that, that specializes in, you know, doing things for other people so that they will do something nice back for you. But Father, we just, we just say we reject that. That's not the kingdom of God. We just say that's the kingdom of this world. And we say we want to learn how to love the way you love. You loved us while we were yet sinners. You died for us. And so, Father, we just want to embrace you as our Father. If there's ever a time when we want to be a chip off the old block, it's right now. We want to learn how to love just like you love. Father, help us to grow in that. Help us to continue to grow in that. Show us. Give us opportunities this week where we can put some of these things into practice and that we can love without any hidden agenda. Father, release us to do so because of your great love for us. Thank you, God. We long to represent you accurately. In Jesus' name, amen. Just as you're standing, we're going to look at the last scripture, and this is what it says. John 8, 31 and 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, does anyone here believe in him? Yeah. This is what he says to you. You are truly my disciples if you will remain faithful to my teaching, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. God's desire is for you to be free. That's pretty good. That's awesome. Thank you, Father. Father, you're the best Father there ever was. We're so grateful to you. We're so thankful for your fathering of us on this day of all days. And we just, we just rejoice in, in, how, in, the, in the place where and how much we do know you as a Father. And we just say, Father... We want to grow. We want to learn more. We want to practice more. We want to put it into our everyday lives more so that we live secure, free, loving, generous, and kind, just as you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. If, you, if, you're, uh, if, you, if you need prayer about anything, we would not encourage you to go home. If you need prayer to come up for prayer before you go home. Don't leave for home without it. If you just need a hug, we have several people, Bill and Vi and Mike and Claire and different ones who will come and pray for you. So just feel free to, to uh, fellowship and mingle and just uh, enjoy each other's company or hustle off to take your dad out or whatever you're doing today. But God bless you and may the Father go with you.